Thank you. Thank you. So, hello everybody. I'm Christian Muse. This is Nir. Uh, a little bit before we begin. Uh, so, we noticed a few things. Running an IPC is very hard. We now know this. Was this the first for you? Uh, yes. The first for me, so we now know how hard it is to run an IPC. And we thank you in advance for being generous with uh, how we analyze the results and any quips you might have with how the results are presented or uh, how things were run. There's a lot of issues that go into this, and we're willing to chat at, it at length later on if you'd like. Uh, unsolvability is thankfully still very hard, so we don't have any team that has come and just cleaned the floor with every domain we were able to throw at it, which is a nice thing to have, which means there will be future unsolvability contests. Uh, but I think most importantly, kudos to everybody who made this easier. Uh, Florin and Yendrick and the Basel crew for giving us access to the servers to run this in a nice fair way and actually letting us kick them off the servers so they weren't allowed to see anything for their own servers for the last number of uh, weeks, months almost. Uh, Malte Helmert for involved fast downward diagnosis and uh, you can talk to him later about what we had to do with that. Uh, ICAPS for sponsoring the awards that we'll be uh, presenting out tonight. And everybody who submitted the planners, especially for an inaugural contest. I know it's a big ask and we pushed a lot of you to stick through it to the end and very, very grateful that uh, everybody who did stick around did. Uh, so, the motivation for the unsolvability track, uh, primarily it's to promote techniques that are dedicated at, uh, if a planning problem is unsolvable, and this is important in a variety of different areas, system verification, diagnosis, planning with avoidable dead ends. I think what we've noticed most importantly in the last few weeks actually is identifying human errors and models as a knowledge acquisition tool or a no uh, knowledge engineering tool. This can be very, very useful. Uh, Components and cellular automata proofs. This is a relic from last year. We didn't actually use any of those domains. Uh, and a little bit of details on the scoring. So the primary focus here in the first contest was just on coverage. We didn't use any of the IPC quality. Well, there is no quality score because you don't have plans that get returned. Uh, really, it's just the coverage, and we're only looking for those that can detect the unsolvable instances. Right. So some of these domains have a mix of solvable and unsolvable, and we only count the coverage on the unsolvable instances. Uh, a solver would be disqualified in a domain if they indicated that a solvable instance was unsolvable. Thankfully, this didn't happen once. At least it didn't happen once uh, maliciously. We fixed a few of the planner bugs that were reporting uh, unsolvable for everything that they saw, and that was okay. It was just parse problems, but uh, so we didn't have one disqualification in the entire contest. The ideal benchmark for us, again, it's a mix of solvable and unsolvable instances. Uh, no syntactic distinction between them. You don't want to be able to just look at the PDDL and say, yeah, this has got way too many objects. It's definitely unsolvable. Uh, and at least some of the solvable problems should be hard, right? You don't want somebody to just uh, run a solvable planner and then time out and say, yeah, nothing here. So the benchmarks were sourced from dead end states of classical problems, oversubscribed problems, new domains, etc. And we'll describe all of them in just a sec. Okay, so in total, we had a. Uh, 15 domains, three were inspired by existing domains that we took just from the IPC, and we had two new domains, which is great, because we're a bit afraid that we wouldn't get with them. Planners, we had 14 teams that expressed interest. At the end, 11 teams submitted, and among those, we get like a representation of four different labs. So, the domains, the three domains that we were used, and that you should no, the domains are bottleneck, for example, you have to move around a grid, uh, pixel and sliding tiles, you just make them unsolvable. Then, uh, oversubscribes. So we have a set of domains, thanks to Marcel, Hutan, Jorg, and Martin. And we use basically the same idea that they basically constrain the problem in such a way that there is no solution. Okay, and we have a set of problems, it's the overload ministry, over TPP and over overs, whenever you see the results. Uh, more domains, bug problems, okay? So thanks to Patricia, Mike, uh, and Santiago as well. Sorry that we're missing there. Uh, for the idea of reformulating the problem using a bug representation, and they get unsolvable instances as well. We have bug transport, bug reaper, and bug barbon. And another set of problems, document transfer, this is uh, thanks to Jordan Douglas. Uh, you need to deliver some documents, but you can use these documents to fool a train. So, and if you don't have enough documents, <laughs> you don't have enough first. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then diving domain is thanks to 
Charles, Nathan, and Christian Muse here. You need to take photographs, but maybe you are just underwater and you don't have enough water, uh, enough air, so you might hit at the end there as well. And also diagnosis problems, thanks to Patrick for providing them. Um, basically, we're, they are encoding known problems that I had from previous papers. Uh, what else, what else? So, Tetris, okay. This is Mauro Valati, thank you for that. So it's Tetris where you can actually clear the board. Then we had Pexel Row 5, uh, given by Florian and Malte. It's a special case where there is no solution. You can ask them more about it. Um, and then we had the chessboard Pebble in a very nice domain as well, provided by Florian, where you have to basically clear the bottom corner of an infinite chessboard. And it's a very fun game to play and challenging, and sometimes and so on. Um, what, what's next, what's next? Planners. So the order of the planners are the order that they sort of came in in submission, I believe. Uh, we haven't renamed everything in the scripts, and so I think this follows maybe team one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on all the way up. So that's the order that we're going to present them. Reach, launch, reach, launch, sorry. Uh, starts with a six minute depth first search phase followed by property directed reachability. The eye prover plan, uh, it's a theorem prover for a lifted first order representation. That's the saddest planning uh, type thing. SIMPA, how would you pronounce that? SIMPA or SIMPA? SIMPA. So SIMPA is a symbolic search using PDBs and perimeters around the initial state and the goal state. There is an irrelevant, or sorry, relevance, irrelevance version of this. So there's two versions of SIMPA that you'll see. Uh, the irrelevance version tries to remove irrelevant operators before it starts. Uh, merge and shrink uh, is one that uses linear merges in a perfect merging and shrinking strategy and optionally uses the irrelevance pruning before it starts as well. So the simulated dominance, and again, I apologize, we have planner names for some of these and we made it up for some of the others, so let us know when we can change your planner name in the, uh, the final slides. Uh, but simulated dominance uses merge and shrink with multiple merge strategies, A star with H1 and dominance pruning. DEX, D-E-C-S, is the decoupled search space with an X star shaped topology. This is the decoupled search that you guys might have seen in the last couple of years. Django performs an incremental red-black search using A star and H max. And I encourage everybody to check all of the planner descriptions, but Django is a, an extremely fun one to read as well. Uh, clone is a depth first search using critical path-driven clause learning. I think we'll hear more about this later on in the week. Uh, the next is a portfolio of planners from a portfolio of people. I think a couple of teams sort of uh, came together for this one. Uh, so IDOS is a portfolio using stubborn sets, combination of dead-end pattern databases, LPs with potentials, projected depletable resources if they could detect it in the problem. There's three versions and this just distributes the time among these different things in different ways. So they submitted three variations just to see what the difference would be. Uh, we have H++, uh, which is incrementally improving the lower bounds until uh, it detects unsolvability. Uh, the dead end pattern databases, where half of the time is spent building your pattern database, and then half the time is spent searching with that pattern database. Uh, and we had 11 planners plus one, and the plus one is just an eager blind search using the latest of fast downward code base. We've gotten to the results already. So we have a few slides on the results. We're going to present the runner up and the winners first of all, and then we're going to just briefly dive into a little bit of the insight. So I would ask the runner-up just to wait until we announce both and then everybody come up and receive a certificate. And is there photos to be taken? Those in the front row with good cell phones, please take out and use hashtag ICAPS2016. Uh, so the runner-up is Simpa, which is Alvaro Toralba. Toralba, sorry about that, and York Hoffman. So. And the winner is... Aidos. Martin Wells, Central State, Florian, and Wilson. So, if the uh, two teams come up, we have a certificate for both. There is a small monetary uh, gear fund prize that will come at a later point during the conference. And copies of the certificate for everybody on the team.
Just a few notes on the results. We have the, uh, the very nice way to visualize that we've seen in previous IPCs. We've sorted the domains across the top from ease of solving. And this is not for the top planner, but for all of the planners. And so we found a few of the domains are kind of easy on the left side. And some of these are the, the ones we've seen in previous years to the most hardest domains on the right hand side. And then the planners themselves are sorted. The one thing I wanted to point here before passing the mic back to Nir is that there was a set of domains where the top and the runner-up sort of uh, went back and forth on. So there isn't any one planner that has wiped the floor. There is still things to be brought from the different planners and strengths in each of them. Uh, and sometimes the shades don't bring it out, but there really was a difference in some of these domains where the runner-up was doing uh, much better. And a little red in the top, like we said, the previous domains that we've seen, the planners have got a handle on it. And some of the newer domains that are being introduced, these are the ones posing difficulty. Yeah, so just last remark, I think it's interesting to see, we have more tables that we can show, but when you look at the problems uh, that were solved but different, by different planners, actually this changes a lot. So planners are orthogonal, there is no one that dominates really. Okay, so it was, a, it was good to see. Uh, in terms of a known known, so there were some pro problems that we didn't know whether they were solvable or whether they were unsolvable, and thanks to some of these planners, we had an answer. So this is just to show that, for example, Simpa was very good at discovering document transfer problems that we didn't know which was the answer. And for diagnosis, we had Sim dominance and Simpa uh, without the R. That was, they were also helpful to finding some answers for unknown domains. So that it was also useful just as a default to figure out some, some answers that we didn't know. So next step for us, we are going to release all this information in this URL. There is a Git repository with the solvers, the domain, the evaluation setups. You can run everything again if you want. It takes quite a long, so patience. Then we have a data joy project with all the statistics and analysis tools, tools that we use. So there is the JSON with all the data and some Python, Python scripts that you can just click, run, and change to find different stuff. And all the planner descriptions with extended abstracts. And just to finalize, finalize well, the big question. Yes, yes. And to really finalize, finalize, you get the clicker. We just want to say thanks again. There's a, a lot of people that sort of helped push this through to the end, and it wouldn't have finished with, uh, without the help of others and not just us, uh, all the way from last year and before. So thank you to everybody. I think we have time for a couple questions, if there are any. Right? We've, we've been nice and short. Yeah. No, uh, so we do have some ideas on what a certificate of unsolvability would look like. We didn't want to enforce that on everybody that might want to enter the contest. And so the hindrance to submitting something that would, here, if Lama doesn't solve in 30 minutes, return unsolvable, to prevent that, we have a very strict, if you say it's unsolvable and there is a solution, you're disqualified from that to me. Uh, but again, in the same light, this was the first contest. We worked very closely with a lot of the teams to get rid of as many and if not all of the SAG faults that we saw. And originally we had asked for, say, solvable, unsolvable, or unknown. But we realized that everybody who submitted a planner, it's a sound and complete planner. So if they say unknown, there should be a reason for it. And so we went into everything and we treated unknown as a SAG fault, essentially. And we say, is it memory? Is it timeouts? Is it some other reason? Uh, so we've sort of tackled every single thing like that. Plus, we trust the uh, submission score. Yeah. Any other questions? Any takers for 2018? We would like to enter, so you know. <laughs> no?
thing that moves it from that area. Okay, now um, yeah. as a result uh, and a little discussion about the um, competition on knowledge engineering. Um, and there's four of us that organise this: uh, the, the Lucas uh, Clapper, Mari Vellati, um, and Tiago Avacera. Uh, I must admit, they put in most of the work. I was kind of in the background, um, and it took us over a period of about, uh, about getting on for a year, I think, to, to organise it all together. Uh, so it kept, if you remember, um, back in 2005 was the first run, um, and at that point. And until today, I guess, the, the, the idea is uh, to promote the sort of knowledge-based and domain modeling aspects of AI planning. So to look at the planner as a component, maybe, in a, a larger system, uh, which has to be engineered, and, and in particular, uh, the knowledge that goes into maybe a domain-independent planner has to be uh, engineered uh, as well. So it's kind of to promote those uh, aims and objectives, to think about things like how collaboratively we can uh, create uh, the domain knowledge for a planner, or maybe how we can create translators from application-oriented languages into solver-ready or planner-ready uh, languages. So it's that kind, those kind of areas, the sort of surrounding bits of the planner, uh, thinking of the planner as, as a black box. Uh, so we have five runs of the, uh, this is the fifth run of ICKEPS now. The first one was in 2005, and in fact that was the most open one, so that invited uh, tools and uh, tools environments to enter. And at that stage we had tools environments which did all kinds of static analysis and debugging and uh, automated construction of domain models, etc. And uh, after that it went in 2007 and 2012 more of a uh, looking at the exercise of um, knowledge engineering given particular scenarios well before the, uh, the actual competition or the, the, the ICAPS date itself. Uh, and between those we had ICAPS 2009 which was looking at tools for translating from domain, formal domain, uh, formal application um, oriented languages into uh, things like PDDL uh, and solver-ready uh, domain models. And then finally we come to uh, 2016. So the purpose of 2016 is quite slightly different from the other ones. It was actually to have a online competition. So this, this had never really been done before. Uh, I was very, very um, um, skeptical that it actually would work at all. Uh, I didn't think people would want to put in uh, six hours on a Sunday afternoon uh, with jet lag to actually uh, work so hard on this. I just didn't believe it, but it actually, I think it, it did work. So, but what was, it's, the purpose isn't, it isn't to test how bright people are. It isn't to test how good at hacking PDDL um, you are. So the, the purpose, it was really to try and look uh, to see how we could use the competition to further the aims of knowledge engineering to work out uh, requirements for cooperative tools environments um, and, and to try and sort of think of uh, innovative ways of using tools to encode uh, domain models. Um, so I'm going to pass over to Tiago now who's going to talk about the running of this, uh, this, this year's competition. All right, so, um, so we had a basically... <laughs> so basically four steps on this. Um, for the first one, prior to the competition, we had um, you know, collected what uh, teams would be interested in participating in. The next thing we did was to kind of provide a couple of examples of, of the style of the problem that you, know, you would be uh, kind of getting to solve during the uh, on-site competition. Uh, so that's what we provide uh, before the competition. So during, on a Sunday, so we started at uh, 3 o'clock and we up to uh, 9 o'clock p.m. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, six hours. Uh, so we did it on site. I'm going to explain how we did that. Uh, following that, so by the way, so the, the on-site modeling was on June 12th, that Sunday. The next day we had a demonstration section, session that uh, it was basically one an hour and a half. I'm going to talk about that later as well. Uh, and then the judges kind of uh, got all that information. Uh, we, uh, organizers, put it all together so they can evaluate uh, to get to a conclusion who, who was the best uh, team. 
so we had two basically tracks. One is uh, uh, people will be mo uh, focused in modeling in PDL. The second one, you can just bring in your own tools, language, uh, solvers. Uh, so it was kind of open. Uh, so basically, we had um, four for the for the on-site modeling part. We had four scenarios: two temporal and two kind of classical problems. Uh, within that six hours, they had to uh, try to model as many problems that like, they can uh, model, uh, and then submitted by by nine o'clock. Uh, all that they had, you know, PDL models or any sort of uh, non-PDL uh, model, and, and along with their planners. What we did for the PDL uh, track, uh, we told them that we're going to be using a certain uh, a list of planners, so they could actually potentially download, use the planner from IPC, by the way, and then they could run it while they're modeling. They could test uh, on the fly. So we're not hiding anything. We just we we just ran it. Uh, when they got when we got the models, we can just run the same uh, planners that they were supposed to use. Uh, while modeling, they were supposed to cooperate, uh, to collaborate, and use any any knowledge you need to at all. So you can just something that we you know the community had developed before, something that you you, you developed for for this particular competition, or no basically no to at all, or any editor, or whatever you wanted. Or for the second part, which demonstrates, so after uh, the long day of six hours modeling, uh, the next day they have to present, so 10 minutes uh, of a presentation, so they have to describe basically what, what's the knowledge, what is the, 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 the knowledge for us that they use uh, to model, and then to get the, the models to, uh, together. Uh, some sort of uh, how many models they ended up uh, developing, uh, any strategy uh, of cooperation, uh, or, or any strategy for putting the model together. And any kind of insights or suggestions for how uh, what is needed on the knowledge engineering uh, topic. So we had a a fantastic uh, board of judges with five leading experts on the area. So that's that was a very good. We were very happy with this uh, board of judge. They had to rank each team, you know, with the with the set of models they come up with, with the demonstration uh, in a scale of uh, 100. And I'm going to explain this later, but we divided in 45 points for knowledge engineering process and 55 points for the model itself, what the models that they can come up with. Uh, here are more or less the criteria that uh, we use for the knowledge engineering process. Uh, we uh, focus on, and then we provide a kind of form for the judges so they can, you know, in a scale for each one of those criteria. So the first one, how, how original and innovative is your tool, the, the tool or the setup tool that you use? The second one is how useful and supportive was the use while uh, on-site modeling stage. Uh, how was the, the teamwork, any strategy, uh, if they use it at all, so they have to explain it during the demonstration part. Uh, for the model itself, for each one of those four, if they ended up having the four problems solved, we evaluated the correctness, if there was any bug, or it was, you know, if all the constraints were actually modeled or not. Uh, readability, we, we check if they if you could actually read the model without no problem and as a human could actually understand what was going on and some documentation there. Uh, how general was your model? If you know, it was really hard coded, you, you, if we changed the scenario or, or a particular problem is, it would have no idea or it would have no way to solve the problem at all. How original were if you kind of have a nice, you know, tricky uh, modeling strategy? So that we're trying to count on there. So as organizers, we, go, we collect all those models, and what we did was we ran the planners, we got the runtime, uh, we got you know, the quality of the plan, we tried to somehow evaluate you know, how big was your problem or the model, or you know, number of operators, number of lines, and all that. So we, we provide this at least as a minimum for the judges. We had four problems. Uh, the first one, uh, let's start with the hard, uh, hardest one to the easiest one. So the, hard, the first one is a Star Trek problem. So that's uh, uh, designed was by Steve Levine from MIT and myself. Uh, it's uh, a kind of a, a kind of a game scenario. You have um, so there's a deadline to save a planet. You have to manage uh, a set of ships and then collect resources, uh, build the torpedo launchers, and launch uh, the torpedo at the same time to the enemy. So it's, it's a quite uh, detailed problem. The second one is roundabouts, a traffic control uh, inspired problem. Uh, you have to traverse uh, different vehicles around a uh, 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 network of roads, and you have those central nodes of you know, roundabouts kind of connect to different roads. 
The third one, uh, so all those were designed by the organizers as well. With RPG, you have to kind of get your hero out of a uh, not-so-friendly dungeon. Uh, this, the fourth one is a match tree uh, from the classical one, just a, mo a little bit more fly version of that. So the, the teams, we had a, well, we were quite happy, you know, we could, it could be, uh, this, this number could be better, but um, we're quite happy with this uh, participation. We have six teams at the beginning, um, you know, there are 16 people at total uh, across five different countries. Uh, so to, to main, uh, kind of main, uh, name a few, so we have, for, out of five, or out of six, we have five participating on the PDL track. Uh, the first one on the top there is from IBM, they participated on the open, open track. Uh, so by the end of, so all of them started the, the, the competition on on-site modeling, uh, but one of them uh, dropped. It was the last one that dropped at the end. Uh, but we had five in total. Now, given that, uh, I'm going to pass it to Lucas. Right. <laughs> so we are nearly there, but just one more slide, because all the teams did a great job in the competition, and judges want to acknowledge that. And it clearly makes a difficult call for judges. Also, there are some other aspects, such as distributed communication, distant time zones, different continents, communication difficulties. Also, let's say, different number on the team, different number of the members of the teams. Some people were more, some people were less experienced with tool and knowledge engineering stuff, and so on. But the judges came into the following decision. And you know, I would like to call teams one by one. Right? So the innovative methodology award goes to Emre Savas and Michael Cashmore because by using domain transition graph, they helped the hero to escape the dungeon. So The Dilithium Crystal Award goes to the Gold Team, <laughs> Sara Bernardini, Maria Fox, and Chiara Piancentini, because they nearly saved the Leibach from the board. <laughs> competition. And the winners are Nir Lipovetsky and Christian Moore. I just got a couple of roundup slides. Uh, before that, though, 
Can I urge everybody to go to the, uh, the demonstration session afterwards, also to remind everybody that there's a, a method of voting for the best demo as well. So there's a little bit of a competition later uh, to be had. Okay, so um, uh, again, thanks to everybody who's competing and uh, um, especially the winners. I think you're good at competitions, really. <laughs> anyway, um, I think this, we've got two, t two, uh, two slides. One's kind of the, the positive sli uh, slant on this and uh, one's the sort of the, the work to be done. Um, so the positive slant is, uh, again, uh, uh, against my better judgment, uh, the competition was, was a great deal of fun to actually set up, and we actually went through a mock competition a few days before us. The four, four of us locked ourselves in a room for four hours uh, and actually went through these things and tried to do them ourselves. And because of that, we actually then refined the, uh, the competition um, entries, the problem scenarios. So that, that all worked well. Um, I think we, the, the participants um, certainly uh, and the organizers learned a lot about the tools and the, the knowledge engineering process involved. Interestingly, there was a large variation in the PDL models given in. So even in the simplest uh, domain, one of the simplest domain models, the uh, RPG, there was, there was lots of different, uh, completely different models that were actually worked okay with the, the planners, so they all executed well and solved the problems. So that was an interesting uh, output which we'll, we'll analyze further in the, in the future. Um, so that was the kind of uh, uh, the positive side of things. Uh, on the sort of not so positive or, or, or future work side, um, it would have been better to get about 20 teams rather than six. And it would have been better to have a sort of large range of tools environments. We know there's tools environments out there to do knowledge engineering for AI planning. Um, and these kind of generally, in, in most, most of the teams, didn't actually use any of these. So it would have been, would have been better to do that. Um, also, um, from the point of view of co cooperation, collaboration, with the move uh, year on year to ever more to, to uh, put our uh, technology into applications, then the idea of collaboration and cooperation uh, in creating domain models and doing knowledge engineering comes up. And this idea that we have uh, tools, environment, uh, tools uh, environments to support that is an important one. It would be nice to sort of progress that in the future. So uh, I think that's, that's all I've got to say. I'll take any questions now about the competition. Anybody got any questions? So one observation first, as both a participant and runner of the competition, I thought this was a really brave thing for you to do, and I think this is really cool, so well done. Two observations. First, if you wanted people to use tools, why didn't you simply stipulate that they use one or more of a set of existing tools? I think we wanted to be a bit more open than that. Um, so. And, and we might have even got less participants or less teams. I think the minimum, I was looking at the kind of minimum to be five or six teams to have a competition. And we, we got that by making it as open as possible. So it's always a balance between making it as open as possible and trying to sort of forward the purpose of the competition. So it was that, but good point. Yeah, so the, the second observation about your, your, your point that you know nobody collaborated, it was hard to collaborate, well, the, the existing tools, at least the ones that, that I know of, they don't support collaboration particularly well, so I don't think you should be terribly surprised about that, but I think that's absolutely spot-on observation and it's something we all really need to think about because in what we sometimes call the real world, these domains are huge and we know that multiple people are going to be working on them and they're going to be all kinds of interesting, difficult problems to solve. So, yeah, I think you're right on target there. Any other questions? What happened to the open trap? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there was an open trap. Yeah, there was only one participant, huh? And did they win? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, they win the open trap, huh? <laughs>
but they, they weren't awarded in the end, according to the decision of the judges. Any other questions? Okay, thanks very much. Hi, Mr. Speaker. Uh, was there a lot of difference between models in how efficient the plan is produced? And if so, do you think it was deliberately designed or just by charge? So basically, the problem that we require the teams to encode were pretty easy. So we didn't see much difference in terms of runtime. Or okay, there is one order of magnitude between 0.1 second and one second. But you know, it was running on my laptop, by the way. So don't know. Uh, but yeah, we have seen clearly some differences in terms of the number of operators, and also in terms of given the different set of PDC features that each model was exploiting, the number of planners which were able to support each of the models. So these are kind of differences, but we are going to dig into that at a later point. Thank you.